Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We talk about mm-hmm. horror movies on this show, and in this episode we are catching up on a movie from a couple of months ago. It is called Escape Room. So, mm-hmm. full spoilers. No, not full spoilers, sorry. I, I, I'm mixing, I'm mixing <laughs> up with the TV stuff. Uh, we will start spoiler free, as we mm-hmm. always do on this show. We start spoiler free so we can give you a sense of the movie, the quality, mm-hmm. and then we'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers to talk about plot details that are, that are mm-hmm. you know scandalous maybe sure <laughs> okay tim uh you hadn't you didn't go to the theater and see this right you just saw this for the first time no uh, i actually wanted to uh but it wasn't playing at the theater that's like five minutes from my house and i'm like well <laughs> i'm not gonna drive to the theater that's 10 minutes away <laughs> screw that uh but <laughs> uh no i i did want to see it the i thought the i thought the trailers made it look really bad uh but then it actually got like some like pretty decent positive buzz uh when it came out like you you know i saw enough people being like oh no you should actually check this out it's like not as bad as it looks that i was uh kind of curious about it but yeah i just never got around to it Hmm. so it's a movie that at least before you saw it was worth a five minute trip but not a 10 minute trip so that that was the exactly (laughs) <laughs> the amount of enthusiasm you had going yeah, in, pretty much. Um, yeah. So, uh, what is the movie? Because I, 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 I also thought the trailer looked pretty rough, but the, the premise seemed kind of fun. If you don't know what an escape room is, I mean, oh yeah, the... I was just gonna say, have you ever done an escape room? Or I have not, unfortunately. Um, I, I've actually done a couple at this point. I did a, I did one that was lost themed, one that was uh, Amityville horror themed, oh, that's cool. uh, and that. I did a couple that were just like, you know, not attached to anything, but uh, yeah, they are just... pretty fun. Yeah, there was a Resident Evil one actually. Uh, Ooh. Which... Oh, actually. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Well, uh, yeah. Before you go into that, that did actually remind me. There's an Evil Dead themed one that I really want to do, but it's in um, uh, Seattle. But I. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> you're, you're quite a bit far away from Seattle, yeah. I believe, so, Yes. <laughs> But I might be making uh, a trip to that area in the future, so if it's still around, I might try to do it. But yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, but there's a Resident Evil one. I never heard of that. That's cool. Yes, the Resident Evil one in your neck of the woods as well. It was in LA. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, I, I, th- I don't think it was like I don't think it's still there. I think it was because it was the the twenty fifth uh, yeah. anniversary or something uh, okay. like last year. Um, they had the yeah. escape room, which. I love the idea of a Resident Evil one because that's kind of what Resident Evil is. The, ga- the game is yeah. kind of an escape room. It's just a whole mansion. You know, yeah. The puzzles yeah. you're doing are very much what you do in Resident Evil. So I feel like that lends itself to yeah. that premise. But an escape room, if you don't know what an escape room is, you're, you're in a room and there's, there's clues and you have to... Then the, the, the goal is to escape. But there's like locks, there'll be numbers, there'll be the puzzles. Mm-hmm. And you have to look around the room and find the clues and hopefully get out in time. You've got a time limit and you, mm-hmm. you either get out or you don't. Um, this and it seems right for a horror movie it seems right for someone to say hey let's take that but let's make it serious let's make it deadly let's make it you know someone's trapped them in here and they don't know how to get out uh and that's kind of uh, now obviously there's movies that have kind of delved into this before i I would say that there's a little bit of cube in terms of escape room vibes Mm -hmm. there's definitely a little bit the first saw i'd say was kind Mm -hmm. of an escape room to an extent you know so there's, there's been the elements of what escape rooms are kind of in movies before escape rooms even existed if anything escape rooms took from movies to make it a thing oh definitely yeah uh so that's that's the general premise so i mean just to go a bit further into the premise uh six characters mm-hmm. are given mysterious invitations to go to this escape room uh who, who, who they all believe these come from people they know uh you know it's their boss it's mm-hmm. their their cousin or whatever and mm-hmm. they go to the escape room and then once it starts getting going they think okay this is fun but of course things get dangerous and they, they start ending up in life-threatening situations mm-hmm. because the escape room tries to cook them alive or, <laughs> or whatever so that's the premise so tim i will ask the question did you enjoy yep. escape room or did you want to escape the room while you were watching <laughs> uh well i will say it's a little tough, but I'd probably say I mildly kind of liked it. Like, um, I think the premise was interesting enough that I always wanted to see what happened. I always wanted to see what the next room was and how mm-hmm. it was going to, you know, kind of, um, uh, how do I say, like, relate to the people and stuff. Like, there was, uh, 
you know, like I definitely was never bored. I always wanted to keep uh, seeing where it was going. Uh, but the I think the the problem with it though is I didn't really care that much about the characters. Like you know, none of them really were like they try to make them interesting but you know they still weren't that likable or you know what i mean and uh and the deaths and stuff could probably been a little better so uh i'm a little mixed it definitely wasn't as bad as i had originally thought but i didn't it wasn't as great as like i I think you know some people were saying like oh my god it's a hidden gem like yeah i wouldn't go that far but mildly okay What's funny is I didn't even hear anyone talking about this, so I actually didn't know anything about it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'd seen the trailers, so I knew the premise, but I didn't know what the, the consensus was. Um, mm-hmm. I typically, well, I don't think um, that many people saw it. I just think it's the, yeah. like the people that did see it seemed to like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I. It's funny because I kind of assumed that it was probably going to be bad just because mm-hmm. it was a Sony movie. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Sony typically make. A very kind of hollow movie and mm-hmm. so you know i'm watching i'm watching this movie and I, I think my opinion is kind of similar to yours i actually think the middle chunk of it is not great but at times mm-hmm. kind of fun because of the situations they're in um mm-hmm. i was really worried in the first like 15 20 minutes because i thought all the dialogue and the character kind of uh set up was all really cliched and generic and there was lines, there was lines of dialogue that were making me like roll my eyes and throw my head back and be like yeah you know because our main character is always maybe this really quiet girl who's really shy and she's in college and she has this scene with a professor where you know she she almost like puts her hand up to answer a question in class and it turns out she's a she's mm-hmm. a genius she's a brainiac she 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 you know she she can figure out you know she talks about physics in the way that i talk about comic books it's like she, she's you know <laughs> yeah. she's, and after class he's like hey zoe can i talk to you and he basically tries to give her a pep talk about speaking up in class the conceptually this is fine the problem is is that the way he does it and the way he like gives this advice and says zoe over break because it's thanksgiving is like over break do something you know challenge yourself take a risk on something and it just it felt like no lecturer has ever spoke to their student like this this, <laughs> this is such a movie scene uh, yeah. it feels so fake and it just there was a lot of that in the first like 15 minutes I've- what was funny is like in the beginning, like the couple of characters that they decide to follow, I kept laughing because, you know, people would have like bosses or mentors or, you know, professors or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they kept like telling them to do stuff that I'm like, you can't tell them to do that. Like, yeah, like you said, like, yeah, go do something that scares you. I'm like, no, you can't tell them to do that. And then like the, you know, kind of like rich businessy jerky guy was telling his assistant, like, go home and, and watch Karate Kid. And I'm like, no, he doesn't have to do that. Like, and then it, <laughs> it, like, it actually cut to someone else watching Karate Kid. I, I thought it was cutting to the yeah. assistant watching Karate Kid. Yeah, that's why I thought. The, the camera panned <laughs> out and it was just like us introducing to a new character. I'm like, oh, that's a yeah. coincidence. Karate Kid's playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Was that the line that you had a problem with? Because I know you tweeted that. No, no, no. That, 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 the line I'm talking about is in the third act. That's deep in spoiler territory. Oh, okay. All right. Not that there's not bad lines in this first chunk, because there is, but. Okay, because I, th- I thought the line that you were referring to was <laughs> when the, uh, like, the jerky guy, uh, you know, does his little uh, thing about insulting people who play video games, so. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, that was, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was again, that, that character is such a, a, a caricature of the, well, of the asshole, right? Like, yeah. that's who he is. Well, I, I think the problem here, uh, and, and again, like, you could have had, like, a really good movie if, yeah, if I felt more, like, for the characters and stuff. Like, they do try to give them personalities and backstory, but everything just feels very artificial, like... You don't really go that do, do deep. You know, and it, do you know the problem is? It's like the level of characterization in this would be almost okay if it was just trying to be schlocky, but you get the feeling the oh, movie sure. wants to yeah. be this slick, well-made movie. It wants to be slick. Definitely. Like, that, that's the feeling I get from Sony movies. They want to feel slick. Mm-hmm. And the problem is is that if you want me to take it seriously, you have to give me good characters. If you if you want to make it schlocky exactly, and fun, yeah. then make it schlocky and fun. It, it mm-hmm. kind of falls into this weird middle ground where it's trying to be serious, but yeah. it's falling apart because of it a little bit. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And it's also weird the way they handle it because, like, it, it, there's, yeah, what is it, like five or six people? Uh, there's six, there's six like characters, the main... but we only meet but... three of them before the, the actual escape room. <clears throat> yeah, like, it, it's weird the way they choose to give, like, some people, like, really detailed backstory and introductions and other people they kind of just throw in there. Like, um... it, it, it was really weird is once we actually started, because I assumed, okay, we've been introduced to the asshole, the quiet college mm-hmm. girl, and uh, Ben, who's kind of like the, 
the twenty-something kind of loser who's drinking too much. Mm-hmm. Right, we introduce us to these three characters. Mm-hmm. My assumption was going to be that okay, well, these are the three more important characters then. But once the game mm-hmm. actually starts, they all feel equal. Like it doesn't feel like the exactly, other, the other yeah. three characters don't feel like they're lesser because they weren't introduced before. I mean, mm-hmm. there is actually one thing that's really annoying about this is mm-hmm. that you can basically predict the order they're going to die in to an extent because <laughs> the people who that's get true. introduced and this is kind of a spoiler but i don't know how else to talk around this mm-hmm. the people who get introduced and get time spent on them just happen to be the the ones that make it longer and but that is the sure. only thing that makes them stick out between the other the rest of the characters yeah and obviously they do this thing which I mean, let's be real here. I think movies need to stop doing this where they start at the ending. Yes. Like the the beginning of the movie, they sh- they're showing you like the last 15-ish or, or so minutes of the movie. Like obviously there's more after it once you get to that part. But yeah, they, they start with a scene, uh, you know, with a character doing something. So it's uh you already know right off the bat like well that guy's gonna make it at least till you know pretty far yeah it's weird for this movie because like i feel like other movies you can get away with it and it works because there's not like a a, because other movies don't have like a body count where you're like oh well Mm -hmm. who's going to make it to the end it's just more about how do we get to that moment but in this movie specifically it's like well yeah we know that this one person out of the six is going to be at the end because we got a scene from the end at the start yeah no definitely (laughs) and at first i thought it was fine because at first i thought it was just um someone else like this was another game this was like just mm-hmm. the the aftermath of another escape room but mm-hmm. then it you know it, it cut to the next scene and said three days earlier and i went oh wait that's going to be the <laughs> end of the game we're going to see yeah interesting um it, to, to go back to the, the thing you said about the, the douchebag you know the businessman who was making mm-hmm. fun of the, the, the guy who plays video games yeah he, he's a complete caricature but the problem is is so is the video game guy because the video game guy like sees oh, a, yeah, totally. he sees a scar mm-hmm. in his hand and he's like well dude you've got a scar can you still play video games and i'm like no one would ask no one would say that yeah (laughs) (laughs) i I play video games all the time i would that would never be my first question yeah no definitely it's yeah it's very insensitive (laughs) or on the the first 50 questions if ever yeah i I I just (laughs) yeah like um, yeah if you if you know someone after a while maybe you can start bringing like you know stuff like that up but yeah it is like a weird thing to be like but oh of course he's a nerd though so that's the only thing he can comprehend yes yeah. exactly um and uh, you, you get the trucker character who's kind of you know fine i, mean, I know mainly for the actor from uh tucker uh, and dale tucker, tucker and dale uh, versus yeah. evil yeah uh, the one who's not alan today <laughs> yeah um, yeah as soon as i saw him i was like oh that's tucker or dale i forget which one <laughs> i forget which one was which yeah um it was okay because the, the cast is most i mean deborah ann wills is fine like, you know I'll, yeah. she's you know she's she's just you know fine in daredevil and she's fine here um <laughs> Uh, the main actress who plays Zoe uh, Taylor Russell. I knew her from Lost in Space from Netflix last year. Uh, oh, <laughs> so you're the one that watched that? <laughs> I did watch that. I had fun with Lost in Space. <laughs> it wasn't amazing, okay. but I had fun. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone anyone talk about it. But well, uh, for all your information, Connor also watched it because we talked about it on the on the channel. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I assume that if one of you watches it, the other probably did. No, you take that back. Connor watches Game of Thrones. So I'm, I'm not. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not being lumped well, in yeah. with that. Tonight, baby. <laughs> oh, you're dating the episode, Timmy. This is not going up for like a week or two. Oh, no one cares. <laughs> I'm watching a rerun tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now it's evergreen <laughs> uh, you, that's true that's true um so yeah so the characters are really cliche when they're introduced uh they're, like zoe her roommate at one point has a, a line that bugged me as well um all the characters get invited get this like, weird mm-hmm. puzzle box that they have to solve mm-hmm. yeah. to get their invite it's uh it's not the lamont configuration but <laughs> might as well be yeah and she she's kind of you know she's zoning out and she's looking into it um but it's when she, she wakes up what was the line actually I'm, I'm actually starting to blank on it now that i'm talking about it but the uh the the, the roommate before she leaves for, for the break mm-hmm. um says something really weird like it's the Is it like when like something about sleeping with a professor or yeah she cracks a joke about that but mm-hmm. it wasn't that there was like a really weird lane where it was just like it was like a very unnatural thing that no human being would ever say to another human being 
Um, the, I mean, it's probably not what you're talking about, but I did think it was weird just the way she said bye when she was leaving. Cause it was on like such like a weird delay. It was like, she walked out the door and then was like, <laughs> bye. Like it's, it's yeah. I don't, I don't know. For some reason the, the, the roommate scenes like felt kind of weird and off. It felt like, um, I got, yeah, it was, it was kind of this cliche thing where they just wanted her to be typical, uh, you know, happy college girl who, mm-hmm thought her roommate was really weird and nerdy but was trying to be nice anyway but again it just came <laughs> off as really phony it was, it was like the, it was almost like someone had read a book on screenwriting and just copied <laughs> exactly what they're supposed to do to introduce the characters yeah uh with none of the none of the weight of gravitas i actually i looked up the director i was curious what the director had done uh, adam robert uh and it turns out the last thing he directed which we did review was insidious Uh-oh. the last key Oh yeah, yeah. The the not only <laughs> the only not good insidious movie, at least yeah. for my money. He also directed the uh, the taking of Deborah Logan, which we've never done, but maybe one day. Hmm. Jeez, I I feel like that's one of those Netflix movies that like uh, that. I yeah, <laughs> but I also feel like I can never remember if I watch it, and I feel like I probably started it like. 15 times and like <laughs> you know it's just one of those ones like you put on while you're doing dishes or something and then like you stop and then like three months later you're like oh yeah this movie i don't, I don't know maybe we'll have to do it at some point although <laughs> I, I don't know if we want to get the full whatever this dude's name is discography in <laughs> well that's the only thing to do actually then we've done his whole discography so then <laughs> oh well I, <laughs> yeah, and then my other problem, so I was just getting to like my overall thoughts, moving mm-hmm. sort of deeper into than I thought we would be. But the other, the other thing I'd say is that I said the middle was pretty entertaining for the most part. You know, not great, but had some entertainment elements. I think the yeah. last 10, 15 minutes are absolute garbage. Oh, the ending's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolute garbage. <laughs> the ending is terrible. There's not yeah, a single I, I thing I like about it. Well, I, I think the. Uh, and I guess maybe it's the problem with the the premise of this movie, where it's the the escape rooms are what's fun, and that's what you want to see. And then, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but like, let's just say maybe it gets away from that in the end. And then, uh, of course, they you know try to do something to you know maybe expand upon it that this idea or this world or whatever that you kind of like eh, all right whatever this is <laughs> like taking the fun out of it yeah it felt hokey it felt like it was i don't know it took all the mystique out of it and then it felt like mm-hmm. it was also trying to set up a franchise like hey this is how we could do sequels oh without and, a doubt yeah you know, blah blah blah, yeah. blah blah um the actual escape rooms which we're not really talk much about um all right, it's then. almost like they're a character themselves <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're a little convoluted obviously but like mm. they have funny elements there's i, I think my yeah. favorite one by far without getting too deep into it, i'll just say the upside down room uh, yeah me too was probably my favorite just because it was the most fun it was the one that was the most like hyperactive um yeah I almost wish, though, these, because like, it became quite clear, obviously, early on that the, the goal of this is to kill them off one by <laughs> one, essentially, if, if not quicker than that. And I, mm-hmm. I, I almost think, like, I, and that makes me think of Saw, obviously, but I, I feel like I almost would like this movie more and or respect this concept more if, no, there legitimately was a way in every single room for everyone to survive. And maybe they don't always find sure. it, but I, I like, because cause the first room definitely has, like, this is how you could have done it. This is how you do it <laughs> uh, and get everyone out. And I yeah. just, I, I kind of wish that that was always a, a factor and we could have maybe played with that or I don't know. Yeah, I think that that would have been more interesting. Um, yeah. And it's also weird because like some of the rooms seem to be tied into these, you know, people's like backstories. But then there's a couple of them that kind of, I was like, well, I'm not really sure how this, you know, uh, like how this is uh specifically tied into once we get to spoilers I'll, I'll try and tie them all in i don't know if i can okay. but i'll try <laughs> uh, at, at the very least if if they all are then it's like some are a lot more obvious than yeah. others so some are looser than the other ones yeah for sure yeah and then um, if it's like if stuff doesn't go in order like let's say if there was one that was more tied to someone's backstory but they're not <laughs> around by that point it's kind of like Oh well, <laughs> I was actually there was there was a point where I thought, um, I I I assumed there was going to be a really dumb twist, and the, there wasn't <laughs> really like 
even though there's some stuff that I think is really dumb at the end, I wouldn't necessarily call any of it a twist. It just felt really mm-hmm. almost the obvious thing to do is just what happens at the end. Um, mm-hmm. And is at least and, and is less of an interesting way as you possibly could have do it. But <laughs> um, yeah, and that's another thing. There's not even enough rooms for all the characters. I don't think there is six. Maybe I'm wrong, but at least if there is six, one of them is not for just one of them because the last one they go into is... Uh, yeah. Or one of the last ones yeah. they go into is neutral for sure yeah yeah i feel like there's five maybe yeah and the first one is not specific to anyone because the first one's just like the waiting room uh well i mean it ends up then i guess what the the danger in it is supposed to be related to uh you know deborah's uh character or whatever uh oh sure yeah i guess Although it, that one, I mean, we'll get to it in spoiler territory, but it feels like a stretch, like that they, like what they're revealing, why she's like afraid of that room, didn't really seem exactly <laughs> to match it. I thought. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah, it was odd. Um, <laughs> I think we'll get spoilers. I think we've we've exhausted the the spoiler free section. So yeah, let's talk about the rooms. Let's talk about the rooms. So the first room is the waiting room that turns out to be an oven. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, the whole thing's an oven. Uh, and they end up having to like p- press some platform, you know, some uh, is it, the the coasters are buttons on the table, and it opens mm-hmm. up a, a vent, and they have to figure out how to keep them open whilst getting everyone through, and it involves mm-hmm. filling glasses of water, and you know, so on, so on. Um, yeah, I, I guess you know because we find out that Deborah Ann Will's character was in Iraq and she was a soldier and she got by an IED mm-hmm. that the heat and the claustrophobia, uh, especially the vent, is kind of tailored for her. Yeah, which, like, I, I guess, you know, makes sense. But when you see, like, the, you know, the heat and the oven and, like, you know, the fire and stuff, like, your first reaction is, like, oh, like, she was in a house fire or something. Like, mm. you don't automatically go to, like, oh, she was a war veteran that, like, escaped an explosion. Like, it, it technically makes sense. But, it again, it feels like a kind of, like, a weird you know stretch but yeah the, the second one's yeah. definitely a lot closer because uh even though the the location for for business douchebags like mm-hmm. trauma was on a on a like a boat that was like stranded at the sea um the, the mm-hmm. whole idea is his thing was hypothermia and fighting over a jacket so they're in a mm-hmm. really cold room they're fighting over a jacket <coughs> and they're mm-hmm. trying to get a key out of a block of ice and and, yeah. and see like that though it's like so much more obvious because it's like the literal same jacket that <laughs> Yeah. you know it like that <laughs> was from his past and yeah and this is where we get a first death because everyone makes it out of the first room but the second room uh the nerdy one you know falls through the ice and you know drowns underneath the beat you don't get a clear shot of him like i was actually thinking at this point that the mate at the end of the movie it made the, the twist might be that no one actually died that like mm-hmm. all the deaths were kind of off camera and could be mm-hmm. explained later uh that, yeah. that wasn't the case it was it just ended up being that their deaths weren't that <laughs> exciting to look at <laughs> And... now was the re uh, oh yeah and that's like a i think a big problem with it too i'm assuming this was pg-13 i have no idea uh, it, i mean it, it must have been because there's like no gore really but uh yeah like um none of the deaths like you really don't see that much or yeah or if you do see it it's really you know not not that like interesting or gory or anything which i thought was kind of a bummer yeah, uh, PG thirteen indeed. Yeah. All right. So, so now the uh, this nerdy kid, uh, Danny, I think that's his name. The so was the reason why he died in this room was because he picked up the lighter and they don't want you to use like outside items, like or I guess yeah. That was my because th- th- this is this is another kind of uh, bothersome thing. But like in the first room, didn't they have like a line or something like that said like, oh, like you have to follow the the rules or like the yeah. doctor's orders or whatever. So I thought like each room would have some type of rule or something posted that they would see that be like, oh, we can't do this or whatever. Um, but that didn't really come into play. But... Yeah, not at all. Uh, it, it, yeah, that's when kind of felt even like they literally just chose to kill him, whoever was watching. You know, because yeah. there's cameras everywhere, so it's like whoever's watching just chose to kill him, as opposed to the later deaths where someone just died out of you know the the game, the chance kind yeah. of thing. So what what I kind of assumed was that I think like you know in escape rooms you're only supposed to you know use what's in the room to escape. So I kind of thought that since he was going to use an outside item, 
uh, with the lighter that that's when they chose to kill him. But, you know, I, I don't think it was, like, super clear if, if that's what they were doing. No. And then, so they eventually got the key to get out of the door into the, the third room. Uh, was it the, the bar that was next, I think it was? Yes. <laughs> the upside down bar, which I think mm-hmm. is supposed to be for um, Ben, who was the, the drunk, because he, he, he was uh, drinking with his friends, uh, driving, and they all died. Um, cause it, okay, that makes sense. The, the big reveal of this, of course, is that uh, all, all the characters are sole survivors of some <laughs> sort of uh, tragedy. That, that's basically <laughs> the, the, the running theme. Um, although the reason for the running theme wasn't actually that interesting. It was just oh, who, who, the people who, pl- who pay to watch this um just like a theme and this year yeah. it was soul survivors i'm like okay that's not that exciting <laughs> so so i didn't really make that connection uh with him uh which that, that definitely does make sense but um yeah it, it's like it's funny though because again like you know we do get a flashback with him but it's in the second room not the you know because they have the the rudolph thing which was you know what he was singing when you know his his car flipped over so it, it's funny it's like all right if this room is supposed to be connected to you but you had like your dramatic flashback in the second room it, it kind of it feels off yeah it's kind of weird the, the, they don't always line up it, it feels like they didn't think to like it's not like they went to each room and that room is specifically just for that person it's almost like a weird mix of <laughs> at, at least from a, a storytelling standpoint it doesn't feel like it's it's all there it, like yeah i don't yeah it doesn't feel very consistent especially like you know when you kind of like it, it kind of is established like with the first room that it's like oh this is connected to this character and then it, this room is going to be extra hard for them and so you kind of and then obviously you know it's fine if they don't do that but you just kind of feel like that's what they're setting up yeah and they don't and it really do it and but the, the bar one is definitely the most fun thing because it's upside down mm-hmm. and the song starts playing you know downtown and Every time the song stops, it's kind of like musical chairs, as one of them points out, uh, a part of the floor gives away. So they all start having to climb up and, like, they're, they're, they're you know, on the underneath of the bar, they're, you know, because it's upside down. So they're, they're, they're kind of climbing onto the things. And this is probably the most fun sequence in the movie just because it's actually kind of entertaining. It's kind of, it's just, it's kind of fun. Like, it's, it's basically a game of lava. You know, when you're a kid, you try to stay off the floor. Yeah. What I, what's good about this one is, everyone's actually doing something like a lot of the other rooms it's just kind of people wandering around going like does this mean something hey i think we need to find Mm -hmm. a key oh maybe we need to move this hey let's like do this like this is uh interesting because yeah people are actively like you know jumping around and trying to avoid stuff yeah and it kept the 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 momentum going because it was like okay every time the song started it's a, it's a clock and so they're starting yeah. to shout out okay we need the eight ball the eight balls missing from the pool table oh there's a, there's a, there's a lock box in the, in the bar uh, mm-hmm. and then you have Deborah and Will doing her, her gymnastics and climbing to try and save everyone and it eventually leads to her death and it she, she falls down the, the giant shaft um it's you know it's, 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 it's probably the most fun sequence in the movie um oh yeah it's definitely sure. fun uh Man, I, I never realized telephone cords uh, could be that strong. Uh, <laughs> Until it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, I'm not sure if that was it giving way or if all of a sudden the people were like, all right, she should die now. I, I think um, it just snapped. It feels believable that it just snapped. It wasn't exactly yeah. that strong. But I, I feel like when she jumps on it, though, it would automatically snap because, I, I mean, you know, dear lord it's been forever since i've you know um like messed around with a phone cord but uh i don't think that that's strong to support like a full-grown human body she's in better shape than you so you know (laughs) sure yeah (laughs) that's my response i don't know probably not i mean if if that if that's a that's not a complaint i'm ever going to really be that mad at oh sure yeah yeah it's not it's not a super big deal to me so uh, yeah again this is interesting but it's also ends up being kind of a boring death because she just falls into blackness like yeah you don't really see anything which I, I, which I don't mind if it's not if it's not going for gore that's fine um it, it's probably still one of the more interesting deaths just because it's you know there, there's a visual like falling into blackness is an interesting image at least if, if, if it's not a gory death sure oh um one, one thing i did kind of like with the um the death in the previous room of uh, the nerdy kid is uh, I did kind of like that shot of like they're all looking around on the ice and then you know kind of you know you get the the above shot and you just see his body is actually kind of sliding down in, like the opposite direction. I thought that was kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah. So 
And then they go to the hospital room. This is where they all piece together that they're all survivors because it's like all these hospital beds with their records on it. Um, mm-hmm. And then this room's going to be poisoned when the time runs out. And Zoe is kind of had enough of this shit <laughs> at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it basically tries to apply the, the logic that her professor gave her earlier on in the movie, which mm-hmm. is that if no one can see you, then nothing is really happening. So she starts mm-hmm. smashing all the cameras sure. <laughs> and she's got this plan. And she refused to leave, even the other guys have, have gotten out. And at this point, um, you know, douchebag guy, you know, uses a defib- defibrillator on the other dude to try and open the door because it's related to heart monitors. Even though it turns out to be a slower heart rate that he does himself, so he actually mm-hmm. kills the trucker uh, yeah. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> um, and then because the, the, the real there is, is that you know when he was in his tragedy with his buddy, he actually killed his buddy to, for survival. He didn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't as uh, innocent. Uh, experience as, it, as it's been made out mm. to be and the next room's kind of disappointing it's just him and ben in this like weird psychedelic room and they get like dosed with the, like lsd or something with that mm. <laughs> and, yeah <laughs> and they have to find the this the well it's not lsd because there's a cure but you know there's, there's a antidote mm. but um it's something kinda, like that yeah like there's some weird hallucinogenic thing i actually kind of like this room uh because it, like you know everything you know previously had been you know kind of complicated i like the simplicity of this where it's just like hey it's pretty much just kind of like a regular room like you can leave pretty easily but you know oh no here's like the twist and you know they're freaking out and stuff yeah um and you know ben goes to the scene that we saw at the start of the movie where he's in this like sort of like you know library and he he accidentally kills the uh the douchey guy yeah he doesn't mean to but he does accidentally do it and he you know, it looks like he's he's done for based on the opening scene, but he actually hides in the fire because the room is like closing in. It's like shrinking. It's the, it's the trash compactor <laughs> from uh, Star Wars, and mm-hmm. but he survives because he hides in the fireplace with a shield. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, so here's here's the line that I'm getting to that I was I was going to I was wanting to rant about is okay. so we cut back to the the hospital set right, and two mm-hmm. two dudes in hazmat suits come in and say, okay, we're entering room five, and they're like you know talking to their their boss whoever it is. Mm-hmm. And they can't see anything in here from the cameras. So they come in and they're just seeing how things are. And Zoe is look, lying there like, as if she was reaching for this like oxygen mask that was next to a tank. And the mm-hmm. guy in the hazmat suit says, I shit you not, he says this. What, an oxygen mask? What was you going to do with that? And then, <laughs> and then as soon as he says that, you hear, breathe, bitch. And then she hits him over the back of the head with, with a, a stand. And I'm like... I hate this scene. I I hate that he's mm. stupid enough not to get that. What, what, okay, there's poison gas been pumped into the room. I wonder what an mm. oxygen mask might do in this situation. <laughs> and then secondly, the line "breathe, bitch," yeah, irked me. I was not happy. Oh no, yeah, that is like completely dumb. Like I understand where they're going for, where you know, uh, oh, you know, it's not enough for them to just complete the game. Like you have to have someone kind of you know outsmart the the game people or whatever which you know that's fine like i get that's kind of you know what you do in these movies but yeah the (laughs) just the fact that those people well first of all like if they don't want people to be able to survive that room without escaping why are there oxygen masks in the first place and then uh yeah second of all i have no idea why this guy is so dumb that he wouldn't understand what she would be trying to do with that and then and um i don't even blame yeah. him i don't even blame him for us look like, for thinking that she's faking it and like figuring that out mm-hmm. but just the idea that he didn't even understand you know let's say she did die reaching for it right she died yeah. trying to reach for it he says what was she trying to do with the oxygen mask i don't know live survive yeah. maybe <laughs> I, 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 oh. Yeah, like, why wouldn't he have said something, like, you, you could have easily had, like, some line, like, where he was like, oh, it looks like she didn't make it to the oxygen mask or something that, uh, yeah, don't make this guy just the stupidest piece of shit ever. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then Breathe Bitch, it's like, all right, like, it, it, it's fine if you want to make her, like, the survivor and stuff, but I, I feel like she's not going to do a complete 180 and become, like, a total badass, like, <laughs> like line-dropping kind of hero all of a sudden. Yeah, and she picks up the dude's gun, and then she's, like, out in the, like, behind the scenes, and she's sneaking around, which is good for Ben, because Ben technically wins, and he meets the, the guy who's running the game. And it turns out this is, you know, this thing that people watch. It reminded me of the ending of, uh, well, I don't want to say because it it's a spoiler, but it reminded me of the ending of an movie. I think, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It was a sequel. A sequel, to another yes, movie. yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Then mm. he's like, oh, are people watching, they pay, and they want these themes, and they want their rooms to be more intricate every year and more crazy. Jeez. And he's like, you won. And, you know, Ben's like, well, that's great, but you kidnapped me and put me through hell. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the guy tries to kill him. He tries to strangle him because like, there can be no survivors. Mm. Like, yeah, you won, but now you're going to be killed because we don't want anyone to know about this. And mm-hmm. luckily, though, you know, Zoe shows up with a gun and, you know, a bit of a fight happens. And, mm-hmm. like, this scene, even before we get to what comes after, just took all the mystique out of everything for me. It was just like, oh, it's just people on the internet watched, pay to watch people in escape rooms. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. So boring and dull. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, you know, we're talking about the obvious movie that it made us think of, but mm-hmm. I feel like I've seen this ending, like, you know, three or four other times at yeah. this point. Like, it, it's it's definitely nothing new or interesting, and... um yeah it it really didn't do much for me and then it's like all the kind of fighting and stuff is like a very you know stereotypical kind of like you know like ooh, like you know the camera's shaking and they're doing fast cuts and it was just you know so much stuff that I'm just like i've seen this before it's not interesting it's not yeah like you said there's no mystique or like it it doesn't feel like oh they're adding this really interesting mythology or lore to it it's just like no no you, you kind of just went the easiest route you could to kind of yeah. like make a story <laughs> and then so they get out the, she comes back with police and they've, they've cleared mm-hmm. out they make it look a den like it's been abandoned as, as if it's just like where junkies go to hang out so they've got clean up abilities and then we cut six months later and ben's got his life kind of in order but zoe can't let this go and she's like found like all the fake news stories about how the others died because they you know they planted mm-hmm. their bodies in other places and she's like hey i think there's going to do a thing here in this city let's go there and mm-hmm. you want to come and then the final scene of the movie is what looks like an escape is... room <laughs> on on an airplane, and it's like there's, you know there's, there's the the flight attendant panic and try to get into the into the cockpit, and then they're about to hit a mountain, and then mm-hmm. someone yells you know cut or whatever, and it's actually a test. This is whoever designs these games has got like people who works mm-hmm. for them testing a plane escape room, and. Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that's okay, I guess. Like, that's fine, whatever. They're, they're trying and doing more stuff. But the final mm-hmm. thing that happens after we realize this is a test is this, like, oh, you know, it's a, and it's a mysterious computerized voice. Whoever the, you know, the, the mastermind is behind this is like, oh, I'm so glad Zoe got over her fear of flying because Zoe was in a plane crash. That was her sole survivor thing. Yeah. Which at first I thought this was going to be like a, um, almost like a flashback or something yeah. where you find out that yeah that she has been in this game since the beginning because she survived in a escape Which room as a child I, I, I would have hated as well for the record yeah. I'd, oh I'd, sure yeah i hated that but uh, <laughs> so the computer was like oh we've, we've, we've you know zoe and ben are going to be going on this flight to whatever you know in mm-hmm. the next week i'm so glad she got over a fear of flying let's play another game like that's at the final yeah. end of dialogue let's play another game and then it goes to credits and i'm just like oh <sighs> The thing is, is like you know, like it's. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if this made like a, a ton of money, but if it did, you know, it's going to become a franchise, and you know, like this figurehead is going to be the, you know, kind of like the main figure, and you won't find out who he is until the third one. But then they'll kill him. But then like they'll do a fourth one without him, and then a fifth one where he comes back, and people are like, "Whoa, he's back!" And uh, it just reeks of like, <laughs> you know, all the dumb stuff that we hate about Saw like yeah <laughs> but uh it, it sucks though because it is like you know a fun and interesting enough premise that you know i feel like you could definitely do stuff like more stuff with it and it can always be fun and different it's just that i don't care about this main story <laughs> now i get that this would just be kind of copying cube but i honestly think the best thing to do for this movie would just be to have them all wake up in the room and not know oh, why sure. they're there yeah, yeah. and just be yeah. like how did we get here let's try and figure mm-hmm. things out uh, I think yeah. that would just inherently be more interesting. Um, how do you end it? I don't know. Um, yeah, I just I don't have one person survive or something or I don't know. Oh, <laughs> wait, we, <laughs> we we skipped over a really dumb part too. Oh, did we? Uh, Go on. Yeah, when uh, she goes back to or wait, is it? It is. It, it's Ben that goes back, right? Oh, or, no, it's it's Zoe. Zoe okay, yeah, yeah. Zoe when she goes back and it's a big abandoned thing, and um, the the person that controls the room or whatever is like Doctor Wu Ten Yu or something, 
and then she's like looking at uh this like graffiti on the wall it says no way out and then the letters start popping out at her and rearranging and she's like oh wait a minute it was an anagram the whole time for no way out i'm like yeah okay, okay. that's a fairly generic just kind of phrase it's, though it's not like yeah <laughs> i mean it it's fine if that's what it was but i think the way they presented it with the letters like popping out and then rearranging on screen was so goddamn dumb <laughs> i, th- I, I <laughs> yeah, think what bugs me about that though is it doesn't affect anything like so what what if she'd figured this out in the first room that this is an anagram for no way out would it have changed anything they well, did the entire movie no well my my th- well, what i was thinking they were doing with that and uh and yeah if they did discover it earlier it wouldn't have any any effect is i thought that they were saying like oh you still haven't escaped yet like you're back in the real world but you know you're still part of our room or, or like i don't know something dumb like that but mm. i i guess it really, really wasn't the case i was curious how much it how much it made to see if it was sequel worldly and mm. un- unfortunately i think it is actually it made 153 million worldwide yeah which and then, i mean you know nine million dollar budgets so i mean that's actually quite profitable actually yeah and and, you know i I think it's like something you could do with probably a you know relatively cheap budget because you know it's not like you're bringing in like you know super huge actors or anything and um yeah i'm sure designing the rooms and stuff probably you know will will be where most of the costs go but yeah again it's not like something that you need like a super huge budget for but i mean again i i I did have like enough fun and stuff though where i would be interested in seeing the sequel it's just again uh, it's going to be more for the rooms and the challenges that are in that what but the actual storyline i couldn't care less about (laughs) yeah i mean better characters um I, i don't really i mean the actors are fine in terms of like who they are oh but sure like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't necessarily feel like i want to see a sequel that's like zoe try to take down this organization mm-hmm. whoever they are like i don't want the espionage side i want <laughs> no definitely not yeah <sighs> so yeah like it's yeah it, it already feels like they're you know like you haven't played enough with the premise like you know we want more fun rooms and stuff like you know maybe after we had three or four movies of that maybe you can expand upon it and i don't know do something like that but i, I guess what i try to do is always make her kind of the, the sherlock who can figure these things out like she she, she always sees the the code and the clues and that which yeah. is which is fine I, like like yeah maybe maybe that'd be the more interesting thing like if you if you start the next movie if there's going to be a sequel with you know a group of characters in an escape room but like you know when they're in the, the second room like zoe like somehow gets inside like she breaks into the escape room like you know she, t- yeah. t- to get to them or something. i don't know like like maybe do something like that and they, they don't want to trust her because she's this weird person who showed up in a different way or whatever i don't know um i feel like there's, there's ways I, to do this because the premise itself is yeah. kind of fun you could probably like i don't know open up with maybe her in an an escape room and then maybe it looks like she doesn't get out or something and then yeah cut to a new group of people and then yeah maybe later on uh she joins up with them and you find out she did escape or something like that or uh they somehow converge but yeah it's uh i I think yeah basically the point we're getting at is you know (laughs) whatever you do just (laughs) make sure that there's more fun rooms and stuff don't (laughs) worry about building too much of a story and mythology and stuff to it I think the natural thing to do next is turn it into like a escape mall or something like that, and have a whole mall. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. then the third one's escape say. <laughs> sure, and then they escape planet. And, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> escape galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> and then you end it with escape dimension. Ooh, interesting. There you go. You okay. Keep escalating. <laughs> 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 yeah i mean i mean to just kind of some go back around and sum it up the, the movie like ultimately is kind of just a mediocre film overall but the the start and the ending are like terrible especially the ending like it's easily the worst parts about it the middle is watchable it's like you know sunday afternoon you want a, a yeah. movie on the background escape room will probably be fine for that but that's yeah that's <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's not like it's not high praise, but I think the the best thing to say about it is it's a mediocre movie that's very watchable. Like mm. it's at, at no point was I like, oh, this is a slog. I can't handle this. <laughs> When's it gonna be over? Um, you know, it's like a brisk like ninety ish minutes, and you know it's it's interesting enough and fast paced enough that it's. Yeah, sir. Maybe. Yeah, I, I guess uh, I'm not like <laughs> I'm not bummed that I didn't rush out to theaters to see it, but I am glad that I saw it eventually. Okay. Well, what, what you rating it then? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, these ones are always kind of tough, uh, you know, because it's like, well, I, yeah, I don't want to go too low, but I want to go too high. Um, I think that, I'm going to give it. A... There's a number for that, Tim. <laughs> well, that, that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah, just kind of down the middle. Uh, but I think I'm going to go slightly above that. So I'll do a 5.5 5, uh, because, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Uh, but I do think I slightly liked it more than just saying I'm, you know, completely split. Yeah, I am going to go straight down the middle and go, 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 give, it, give it the 5. So it's a watchable five, um, mm-hmm. but you know, it's it's not something I can recommend in any way, shape, or form. It's like, yeah, if you have to put on something in the background and you you know don't want to have to pay attention to it, this is okay to put yeah. it in the background. <laughs> like, that's just, it's this a, is kind of what it is. I, yeah, it's an it's an ideal streaming movie. Like if it's mm. like it's on VOD right now, but if it's like uh, you know once it's on like something like you know Netflix or Hulu that you already have, that's a uh, yeah. It's one of those. It's a good kind of watch like that that you can just put on, and yeah, if you do have to get up or something, you, you know, you don't have to have worry to, too much about it. You have to. You have to pause it. Yeah, <laughs> <what> exactly. <laughs> you just kind of let it keep playing. It's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, where you go? That's Escape Room. Um, you can of course let us know what you think of the movie in the comments below. You can like and subscribe and all that stuff. That does help us. As does of course go over to patreoncom slash TV mm-hmm. where you can support us for as little as one dollar per month. And for that one dollar per month, you get a bonus episode of Screams After Midnight every month. And at the five dollar tier, you get to vote on an episode every month. So uh, head over to Patreon, have a look, and see what's on offer and what other shows we do and all that kind of thing. And see if it tickles your fancy. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, otherwise, I saw it. Ask as- Screams Midnight on Twitter. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But that is us. That is, so thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we will see you next time.